Hi everyone, my name is Charlie and today is the beginning of another reading vlog. You can see the hair has been cut. It's currently swept in a very strange way indeed, but it is Monday. We're back at work. <laughs> Have I finished reading anything since I last spoke to you? No. Did I get up yesterday with the intention of finishing two books? Yes. Did I do it? No. So... I still have 90 pages left of Parade by Rachel Cusk, and I shouldn't have that much left of that book. It's a very fast read due to the fact that there are few words per page and you get through them rather quickly. I didn't read as much as I thought I was going to. I might have fallen into a trap of watching very old episodes of Airline. I'm talking about when it was following the staff of Monarch as opposed to EasyJet as it did later on. I know, riveting stuff. I have found out that Katie has finished Mr. Scarborough's Family by Anthony Trollope, and I am quite a bit behind on that when you consider the fact that she has now finished it. But I'm sure that I will get that book done this week alongside a few others that I want to read. I feel like now, once I finish the Anthony Trollope, I'm going to be free. <laughs> to try and get... I, I'm really thinking I'm going to be focusing on some of the shorter books. But I should look at my TBR because I only made it last week and I might have forgotten it. The Rachel Cusk has changed a little bit, in my opinion. There isn't so much of the philosophising as there was early on in the book that was annoying me. It's still there, but it's not too bad. We still have these discussions of art and artists, and I can find that irksome at times because of the fact that these artists didn't really exist, their art doesn't really exist, and so we're being asked to respect pieces of art that we don't know about, and then because it's a visual form and we're just having it written about, it doesn't have the same level of like thinking something's really great because we don't have that, we just have the words that are on the page. And there's an awful lot of telling and an awful lot of exposition when it comes to certain aspects of Rachel Cusk's prose. On the other hand, there have been some delightful descriptions in there. Then, at the same time, there's been some very generic stuff in terms of familial relationships. And that's what has annoyed me a bit more. This book has felt a little bit generic, a little bit plain, a little bit every man. There have been these touches to try and make it seem more than what it is, a little bit more pretentious, but at the end of the day, this is a story that we've seen many times before. I, in terms of, like, there are several different stories, but each one we've seen many times before. Indeed, there was one story with a man who'd moved his family to this farm, and I was very much reminded of an Elizabeth Taylor story that I read earlier this year. I'm hoping that oh, this book all gets pulled together in the end. But at the moment, it's a case of, as I've talked about in the past, living in hope and dying in despair. Still haven't found a car. Was chatting to my dad on the way in and telling him how. What I'm most disappointed by now is the fact that I've missed getting to see the forest at my favourite time of year. It's really nice to go up to in autumn, and by the time I get back up there, it's going to be winter and all the stuff that I like to see will be gone and that's just getting to me a tiny bit because I really do like to see the forest in autumn but nobody's been kind enough to give me a lift up there yet. I understand it's a bit difficult because of where we live to ask somebody to go and drop me off at the forest and then return two hours later because it's not like there is a walk home for me. I mean there is a walk home for me. I could always walk home it would just took take me it would just take me a long time to walk from the forest to my house is at least an hour and Sally doesn't like main roads I've got to figure out something there because even I'm getting mildly fed up with the same course down the toth path the toth path the toe path even I am getting a bit fed up of the toe path although yesterday when we got on it Sally did meet one of her friends and it sent her into a frenzy so that after we'd finished with them she decided she was going to roll in something and then she just got into every single pile of leaves that there was and she rolled through them like nobody's business. So I think she enjoyed herself. I've left her in bed today anyway. But that's me, that's the start of my week. This week I intend to 
implement Dave's edits on Mistakes Mean Murder and get that finished, book some events for that book for next year, talk to the venue who hosted my launch last year to see whether they've got any dates available for next year. It's all going to be fun. And for now, coffee. It's Wednesday, and we know what that means. <laughs> so, today, social media is a terrible place to be. Therefore, I made the decision that I was just going to avoid all that entirely and have a nice, quiet day. So far, it's five past one, and I have managed to avoid doom scrolling on my phone. I have also been trying to get all the clips from last week's vlog onto my computer. I'm having loads of storage issues at the moment. I don't know how to fix them. I have an external hard drive, but there is stuff that I need on my computer in order to like work, <laughs> such as the Mistakes Mean Murder manuscripts and poetry. I do need the poetry on my computer. Tonight is Poems and Parts at the Bottom Warehouse, and I've written a poem in which I use moth as a metaphor for anxiety. And now I want to write something else. At the moment, the only thing I have in my head is, for now, forget. I don't know whether anything will come of that, but that's what's in my mind. On Monday, I finished reading Parade by Rachel Cusk. In my November TBR video, I was concerned that this book was going to be pretentious. I was correct. This book is obtuse and overly pretentious with no through line as to what's actually going on. Various characters all named G who happen to be artists who Rachel Cusk has just used as conduit so that she can share her views about specific topics that are important to her and I don't like this kind of novel. It was never going to be for me. I like a novel that includes characters and plot and people that you can connect to. I like some form of connection when it comes to a story. So whilst she's saying a whole host of great things in here, it's kind of like, what's the point? If I wanted essays, give me, you know, 
if you wanted to write essays, then write essays, is what I'm getting at. If you wanted to share your thoughts on art, then that's fine. Last week I said how, what's the point in creating all these artists and then writing about art that we cannot see? Apparently she was inspired by some real artists but didn't want to share their names because I don't know why, really. I don't actually have an idea why. I don't know what the intent was behind this book. I thought it was just a thing that exists. It's here. It's a load of words thrown onto pages and it's a novelist not writing a novel, just writing a load of meanderings about stuff, which they spread quite well over pages because otherwise this book could have been summarised as a pamphlet. It weren't any good, in my opinion. That's all I'll say on that. I did pick up some books from the charity shop on Monday, which I'm guessing means that I am allowing myself to buy books now. Uh, I got a fresh copy of Once Upon a River by Diane Setterfield. I did get a copy of this from the charity shop a few years ago and the copy that I've got is incredibly tatty and because this was new I decided that I'd prefer to have this one. Then we have The Long Shadow by Celia Fremlin which is Welcome to the Nightmare Christmas Holiday. On the cover they've labelled Celia Fremlin Britain's Patricia Highsmith and this was a book that was originally published in 1975 but came out last year. Other than this book being a mystery set at Christmas, I don't really have much knowledge of this author or this book, but I am seeing that Faber have released a couple of books like this. So here we have Welcome to the Nightmare Christmas Holiday and on the front of Uncle Paul they've got Welcome to the Nightmare Summer Holiday. So they're clearly going for a theme here. And then I got a book that I said to Charlie yesterday when we were talking that I don't know why I bothered. It's Christmas Carols from Village Green to Church Choir by Andrew Gant. This is the history of 22 Christmas carols and at the back it has an accompanying CD. I do like a Christmas carol, specific ones, and last year I did enjoy listening to the Christmas carols that came on Classic FM, but I do wonder whether I was enjoying them more because over winter I was regularly having a glass of port every night, you know, because that's just the type of old man I have become. I got this because we know that I like Christmas, I like the history behind it, whether it be pagan or Christian or all the other conglomeration of things that make it the thing that it is today. We will see if I do get around to this in December, but these are now two books that are looking like they could be read in December alongside all the other books on my shelves that I would also like to take a look at. On Monday I realised how much I was missing going to Macclesfield Forest and that I'd actually missed my favourite time of year up there which is the early days of autumn when the trees are changing colour and you've still got some of the heat there and you get a nice crisp walk through the paths and I can remember really wanting to do the long walk that I would started doing at Mac Forest with Sal and I haven't been able to because of the lack of car. And then I didn't know what I was going to do yesterday. My dad has some land in a specific direction and I asked whether it went past the towpath and it did. And I thought, well, actually, does it go past Teg's nose? And it did. It was incredibly foggy yesterday. Had it been a regular Tuesday and I got a car, then I probably wouldn't have thought, anything of it, of going to the forest and doing my long walk. Instead, I got dropped off at Texnos because I know that I can walk to the forest from there. If you remember rightly, I told you that it takes me an, it would take me an hour to walk from my house to the forest. Now luckily, going from Texnos to Mac Forest is actually downhill. So once I'd found the gate, I just had to go downhill. It was steep, which slowed me down a lot. So it took me about 20 minutes to find this gate. One, because it was foggy, and two, because I was stopping to get clips for the vlog. Then it took me a long time to actually get down this hill because I was concerned about slipping. It was a very wet, muddy path because it's also incredibly foggy. And my knees didn't really care for how steep it was, which is one of the reasons I've decided not to go out today because my legs are in a lot of pain. And then we got to Mac Forest. And when Sally reached Mac Forest, she started running around and she 
seemed to be thrilled and she seemed to be enjoying herself because she was somewhere that she recognised. We've only been to Tex Nose once before and it wasn't the path or the place that I had taken her. I only did a short walk around Mac Forest. I was there for about three quarters of an hour and I looked at the clock and I, I had considered doing the long walk, but the long walk would have taken me two hours. And I knew that I had an hour long walk home and it was already going dark. So I set off back. And I'll give credit to Sally because she hates main roads and she hates going on long roads where there are vehicles going past. And she did that incredibly well. I did have to carry her a few times. She would not go underneath the bridge that goes beneath the canal and she would not cross over at the um, Pelican crossing, the zebra crossing. There is some sort of crossing anyway and we had to go over it but because there was it was rush hour and there's so many vehicles there she was all for running away. She couldn't run very far, she was on a lead, but I had to carry her across the road there. I was glad to have done the long walk. I was out for three hours. I came back, I'd done near 17,000 steps on this walk. So I was very happy about that, even if it does mean that my legs hurt today, because I felt like we just haven't had an adventure in a while. We haven't got out of the house in a long time. And even though the final 50 minutes of the walk wasn't forest or towpath, or Tex Nose, or Countryside, it was still a walk. That was that. I came home complaining of aching legs and made a pan of parsnip, carrot, and curry, and ginger soup. There were a lot of ingredients. Let's just call it an autumn vegetable soup. I made it and I enjoyed it. And then I continue to watch old episodes of Airline because that's just the person that I've become. Anyway, I talked to you a bit longer than I thought I would, so I will say that I'll see you on Friday, and that'll be after Poems and Pies has happened, which I imagine is going to be very political and loud this evening. It's Friday, and I seem to have arrived to work to mild drama. All because somebody has torn pages out of the diary. And I don't know why my manager wanted to keep hold of them anyway, but apparently she did. <sighs> At least I know I'm not the one who took the pages out. But if the person who did it is the person who I think it is, they're not going to be happy. So it's going to be great here over the next few days. I have finished reading Mr Scarborough's Family by Anthony Trollope finally. And I have to say, it proved to be one of the more intriguing Anthony Trollope's that I have read. When I compare this to The Vicar of Bullhampton, in my estimations, I think that Trollope was able to withhold the suspense and the intrigue for a lot longer than he did with The Vicar of Bullhampton, which I felt went a little bit all over the place in terms of its plot. Here, we did have more than one central plot, but there was a through line and it was all connected by our hero. So I was able to contend with it a bit more. Indeed, I won't lie, sometimes I was getting a bit fed up of the number of times we would hear about how everybody now disliked Harry, apart from his love interest. And Lord, th there was something with this woman, and Katie mentioned it too when we were talking about how she has a lot of suitors. She has a lot of people who are after her. I get it for the story that Trollope was trying to tell, but part of me wonders, did this book go on for a while? And then another part of me thinks, if this were some sort of TV drama, this is probably the way that it would go. And if we looked at it from this almost modern novel writing standpoint of encounters problem, tries to fix it, encounters further problem until we reach the end. It did that well. And a little bit of a final turnaround I thought was going to be the solution throughout the book. I don't know. There's just something there for me. Either way, it's done. And I am glad to have that out of the way because it means I can now focus on some of the other books from my shelves. I have brought Whose Body by Dorothy L. Sayers to the shop with me. Not because it's the book that I want to read next, but because the video I have recorded of 
which book should I read next, hasn't yet made it online. I did a first line battle and at the time of recording I haven't yet edited that and got it online. So I thought I'll bring Who's Body along with me because one, it's a paperback so I don't mind it getting bashed around in my bag. Although I shouldn't mind too much if that happened to rare singles because I bought a tatty copy of that. I'm still annoyed about the dust jacket on that one. I've got it and I'm hoping it's going to be a little bit of a fast read. It's not the serious fiction that I thought I would be reading. I didn't walk Salon Wednesday after I was doing the really long walk the day before and yesterday we only went around the park. However, I did go up a bit and around this tree and we met a boxer called, no we didn't meet a box. we met a pug called Banjo who's had a lot of surgeries in a very short amount of time. I decided I'd walk Sally along the grass because she'll go a bit wild when there's an open space but if I'm on the path she'll stick to the path. So I did that, met this dog, went home, walked to town for the writers group and it was all about nom de plumes, pseudonyms, code names, that sort of thing. Then went for coffee. I talked about how I still haven't really come up with what I want to write next. Part of me thinks definitely it should be the charity shop book. I think I've been saying for ages I want to write this standalone book. I already started it last year. This was the one where I had to make the choice between this and the second Alice book. And I was like, from a commercial standpoint, we need to go with Alice. But I think maybe I should go to the charity shop one. Not least because some of the stuff that gets revealed in this book would be some nice Easter egg stuff for the Cozy Crime series. You don't have to have read all of my books, it's just if you went to this one then you'd see some little nuggets of information that might enhance the reading experience of Royally Doris and the rest of the Cozy Crime novels. So maybe I should write that. To be fair, last week a mannequin did start having a conversation in my head, but I thought I've already got the perspective of the charity shop as a whole. Do I really want to have the perspective of a mannequin as well? I don't know. Let me know your thoughts on that one. Either way, I'm gonna have to go because my manager will be here soon and I want to get the heating on because it's a little bit chilly. So I ought to see you tomorrow to round everything off. I haven't taken off my coat because I need to get this bit recorded quickly. My mother was doing a hair so I'm a bit late into work. You know, it's great, isn't it? Who thought that at 32 I would still be getting lifts to work as though I was getting a lift to school? It is hilarious. Anyway, I've sent her off to buy a coffee. I read one chapter of Whose Body by Dorothy L. Sayers yesterday. It's definitely not the book that I want to read next. I really enjoyed the writing and I can tell that I'm going to like reading Dorothy L. Sayers' prose and I like Lord Peter Wimsey as a character. I don't know whether it's just my memory of the TV show that's making me like Peter Wimsey as a character, but I feel like I'm going to enjoy this book but I'm not in the mood for it yet. I might not read anything today anyway because usually on a Saturday after work I'm not in the mood to do much reading. I like the mystery of who's this dead person in somebody's bathtub. You know, we like a book where we have to figure out the identity of the corpse as well. <sighs> Maybe I should do that one day in one of the cozy crime novels. But at the moment our plan with the cozy crime novels is just to get the first five in. But anyway, that was that for reading. I spent a lot of time just watching Airline again. Also watched Drag Race out Down Under, which I've never watched before. I've never been the big fan of it. I think I gave up after two episodes of the first series, but I wanted to see how Michelle would get on as the head judge. Hopefully today's going to be quite the busy day. Well, not necessarily. Really, yeah, we do need a busy day. We need to make some money at this darn shop. We need to sell a load of our Christmas stock, get a few of these books off the shelf sold, and just have a jolly old good time. So I'm going to do that now. I'm going to disappear, take my coat off, and have a coffee and get started on the day. It's Saturday, it's cold, and that's all I've got to say on the matter. This week we managed to get two books finished and don't know where I'm going next with the reading. Didn't get any of the editing done but I am off work Tuesday, Thursday and Friday this coming week so we'll look at the editing this week. 
got to look at finding a car desperately. Couldn't ring up and sort my insurance because they were having a technical hitch. So that's where we are at the moment. But now I am going to say till our Chuck. If you want to talk about anything that I have discussed in this video, then please feel free to do so in the comments. I hope that you got something out of this video, even if it was just something to do whilst contemplating your navel. Because until next time, that is all.